We're trying to figure out what it is I forgot that I wanted to ask you earlier. I just want to thank you for something? playing Paul's tunes to me. It's very nice of you. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> I always get it. I sat in a restaurant in Spain and the yeah. violinist insisted on playing yesterday right in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he asked me to sign the violin and I was... I didn't know what to say. I was saying, well, uh, actually, uh, okay. And I signed it and Yoko signed it. And I, one day he's going to find out that Paul wrote it. <laughs> That's oh, better that's than funny. if they'd played Wedding Bells or Breaking Up That Old Gang of Mine. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> maybe I, maybe I should have saved that for later. You know, uh, well, let's talk about that for a second. Because, which, which, you, you, you know, Yoko, you've even, been, you've even been called the dragon lady who... Um, yes. The, yes. the lady who brought the Beatles apart and or took them all well, apart. Took I have apart. trouble with English. Can we the, please give her the credit for all the nice music that George made and Ringo made and Paul made and I've made since they broke up? If she, ble if she did it. That's true. And now, uh, it turned out all right, didn't it? You turned, yeah. Anyway, but you no were aware of that. I mean, that the press no. saw, oh, always yes. saw you as the, the wedge that was driven in. Uh, the wedge. I don't know how you can drive a wedge in three places or whatever, how many spaces there are between four people. But, um, uh, but that, well, that yeah. was the... How, there are millions of girls who would love to have met, let alone married, uh, one of the four, any one of the four, probably, but certainly a lot of them. <laughs> well, are... I resent to, you know, to, to think of him as as one of the four, you know. Yeah. I mean, or any one of the four, etc. Because I just met him as another artist and all that, and I didn't, you know, particularly realize that part of it really. You were a Beatles fan, or uh, before, or would you say you were a Lennon fan before? Uh, neither. Mm. Neither. <laughs> didn't care for she either didn't really of them. Know about us. No, the only really name she knew was Ringo because it means apple in Japanese. Mm. And so. Ringo means Ringo apple. Ringo means no? apple. Yeah. Did you know so, that when you named your company Apple? No, no. Oh. It was just one of those happy accidents. Just one of those happy mm. apples, yes. <laughs> happy applesauce. Mm. Right. right number of happy syllables. Christmas. Ringo, if you spell it sideways, spells groin. Yes. <laughs> Star backwards is rats. I know, and there are a lot of... Do you do those things, too? I find I, that I'm when always... When I go along the road in the car, I'm always doing the signpost backwards. Anyway, she didn't split the Beatles, because uh, how could uh, one girl split the Beatles, or one woman, you know? The Beatles were drifting apart on their own, you know? Do, do, can you remember when you realized that it was inevitable that you would split up? Uh, I wouldn't, no. First, no. It's like saying, you know, yeah. did you remember falling in love? Not quite, yeah. no. It just sort of happens. How long was it? Fun. Yeah, well, everything's fun off and on, you know. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it could have gone on being fun off and on, or it could have gone worse, I don't know. It's just that when you grow up, you know, we don't want to be the crazy gang, which they might know over here, which is British, or the Marx Brothers, which is sort of being dragged on stage playing She Loves You when we've got, you know, asthma and tuberculosis and when we're 50, you know. Here they are again, yesterday, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, so I, a long time ago, I said that uh, I didn't want to be singing She Loves You when I'm 30. I said that when I was about 25 or something, which in a roundabout way meant that I wouldn't be doing whatever I was doing then, mm -hmm. you know, at 30. Well, I was 30 last October, and uh, that's about when uh, my life changed, really. And especially for John, I can say that he's at least sort of overgrown, outgrown, you know, whatever they were in, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's very difficult for four artists who are so brilliant and talented to be together and do everything together, you know? I mean, just impossible almost. So whatever they were doing was almost miraculous, you know? That they were together at all. With all the pressures and everything yes, that yes, they had. And, uh, I, I guess the hard day's night, everybody thought that was what life really was like for you and that a man with a handheld camera had managed to capture yeah, the well, essence of Beatle life and that it was uh, always just yeah. a f flitting about in a lovely, carefree, joyful way. Mm. Um, well, it, it was it ever like that? It wasn't that carefree ever. It was a lot more pressure. That was a sort of comic strip version of what actually was going on, you know. Mm -hmm. Pressure was far heavier than that. You know? And that was written after the, the, the author spending about three days, days with us when we played in London and then in Dublin and then back in London again. He wrote the whole of the film based on our characters, you know, uh, Clod Hopping Ringo, uh, Sharp John, Whimsical Paul and Stern George and all those the Beatle character myths were formed from three days watching us, you know, which yeah. uh, was a lot of junk really. 
Would you like me to get that for you? No, thank you. Oh. I don't really She's a female lib, you see. Do that's why I hesitated, because I, I, I've had my finger snapped off by ladies on the show that I tried to light. But you do light men cigarettes as well sometimes, if you feel yeah. like it. <laughs> if you're feeling gay, you know. <laughs> wow. Well, I do. <laughs> well, I mean, one does light any sexy cigarettes, Betty Rowling, don't we? I mean, John, I interrupted you, though. And, did you? I'm sorry. Or yes. we, or, no, you were what saying... I meant was, as a woman, you know, it's such a nuisance to have to wait for somebody. Mm -hmm. to, you know, that bit, too. <laughs> and, and do you make a point of opening the door for yourself? No, I don't make a point of it. You know, when I'm tired, it's always very nice if somebody opens. But I, I don't, you know, at the same time, I don't make a point about just waiting. You know, that yeah. is silly, too, I think. You know. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm. I, I think I disrupted something there, or got, I interrupted it. Well, really. I we, were talking, it no. we were talking about the fact that the, the impression in the Beatles movie that was the uh, oh, well, that, that was, was it, sort of really, a comic strip uh, version of what life is like. Well, that was all I had to say, really. It was yeah. a comic strip version, and mm -hmm. it sort of stuck with us. And now for a small message from We'll Be Back. Something like that. He's right about that. We have a station break, and we'll be back. The Dick Cabot Show with special guests John Lennon and Yoko Ono will continue following station identification. The Dick Cabot Show with special guests John Lennon and Yoko Ono will continue following this message. Here's a typical solid-state color TV chassis. If a transistor goes bad, out can go the set. So here at Sylvania, we use plug-in transistors. No wiring, no soldering. Unplug the old transistor, plug in a new one, right in your own home. Look, this tiny little part alone took us six months to put in production. <laughs> but then we, we don't make them fast. We, uh, we just make them good. Color TV by GTE Sylvania. Your letter of the 14th, the shipment is... On Take a Sony to lunch. Dictate into the condenser microphone built right into Sony's cassette quarter AM FM radio. Then relax. The Sony cassette quarter, one of 42 great Sony tape recorders at your Sony Superscope dealer. Oh, we're back again, and, and uh, wait. Uh, Yoko, yes. y you work in film. Uh, yes. I yeah, and, and John has referred to you well, somewhere. You both, did, actually, but, you know, both of you. Yes. But John said somewhere that you were the w one of the best unknown artists uh, in the world. The most uh, famous unknown, most famous artist unknown in the world. Artist. She is, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because uh, she's been in the so-called avant-garde world of New York for almost 15 years producing. How many? Uh, 15 years, about. Well, it's a long, a 10. It sounds like I'm <laughs> Something <three>. like that. <laughs> and uh, she was quite an established artist before she met me. And then once she met me, it was then she became Mrs. Lennon. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, they, that's when they started calling a Japanese actress, you know, when, when in fact she never appeared in any movie up till then. And really, but mainly. And uh, she'd been directing movies and having gallery shows and it, theater shows and things like that. And uh, then it got swamped with Mrs. Lennon, but now it's just about turning around. People are realizing that she's an artist in her own right, but she's still the most famous unknown artist. Yeah. And Do you want to comment yeah, on that? That was brought up, that was brought up because of yeah. this film that you're going to see. Yeah, somewhere. we have a piece of a film that you did. Uh, it's not, maybe the most famous film you did was one called Bottoms. I think so. Bottoms, which was in fact a film of, of, uh, of Bottoms. It was called Number Four, actually. Yeah. 364 Three. bottoms, five bottoms, that was it. 364, five, yes. 365. 365 bottoms, one for each, one day, for of each year, yes. day of the year. Yeah. But yeah. it actually didn't contain 365 because I thought, well, nobody's going to really... It's a conceptual number, you know, Not and they couldn't mm -hmm. possibly count it, so... You mean that the, some, in some cases the bottoms were the same one no, posing no, as other bottoms? No, I about 100. <laughs> You see, the <laughs> interesting thing about the film is apart, all the bottoms were the intellectual and artist people in London. Mm -hmm. And the soundtrack of the film is all of them trying to explain and be very uncomfortable about why they're taking the trousers off. Some guy saying, well, I normally do Shakespeare, you know. <laughs> you know? 
and yeah. then you see his bottom just oh and it's not cut to each bottom but the whole screen is just two bottoms to each side of the buttocks walking like that yeah. and that all these comments are the saying well you know like i normally do shakespeare and uh, what's it all about and the real philosophy about taking your trousers off and they're all jabbering on like that they were yeah. intellectual, so they just had to sort of rationalize it somehow, you know, so they'd bring out Gurdjieff and Sato and everybody out, you know, before they just take off their pants. And mm -hmm. it was really funny. But the, the point was that uh, I was asking to look for intellectual bottoms, you know. They had intellectual bottoms, yeah, so, yeah. And so they would say, well, is this in, in, intelligent enough or whatever, you know. Yeah. And when you look at it on the screen, it's just all the same. And that was the point, you know. There's a show here called New Faces. Uh, what would you call? Well, never mind. Uh, can we take That's a look a at the piece of film you have? You're going to oh, explain yes. about it. Tell us what we should look for. Let me quickly say that this is uh, a female lib film in sort of a, a quiet sort of way, and uh, it's yeah. it's like a diary. You know, it's about a woman who's naked and who's lying down, and uh, and fly the fly sort of are crawling over her body, and later it becomes gradually becomes four and five flies all crawling over her body and the message is like you know uh, there's lots of things in it and all sorts of level of understanding I'm sure but it has something to do with you know a life of a woman who is more like taking it rather than you know doing it positively the flies crawling over you and just taking it you know a passive woman mm. let's take a look at that oh we'll take a look at that in exactly six seconds because six the fingers. film has a certain exactly amount of six fingers time around. we'll look at it yeah. But now, take me away, because I'm going. <sighs>